Oh yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog! Please don't click off the video yet. Yeah, being a fan of Sonic this day and age isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world. Well, it is if you're a complete fanboy or fangirl that thinks Sonic is perfect and everything and anything relating to him is 100% flawless. Let me let you in on a little something. It's not. For a while, Sega was doing great things with Sonic, putting out one good game after another. But then, it just became... Uh... No... Oh... Gosh, Sonic lost my interest! And it really doesn't help that in pop culture, Sonic in general has just become something to laugh at and never take seriously for the most part. Yeah, this includes all the epic meme bullshit that people post all the time, you know, the gotta go fasts or shit like Sonic Dreams Collection, to the point where it's almost become cool to shit on Sonic, like ha ha ha, hey fuck you. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that any series should ever be taken 100% seriously, and clearly some people at Sega, or at the very least Aaron Weber, have a good sense of humor when it comes to this kind of stuff. And that's good, it's good to be able to laugh at yourself from time to time. It just sucks that with this, the Sonic fanbase has gotten such a terrible reputation. But I'm not here to talk about how hard it is being a Sonic fan or asking whoever doesn't like Sonic to change their mind about it, you frickin' fricks. If you're someone that's losing faith in the franchise, seriously, get out while you can. We have enough people here, you'll be safe on the other side. No, but I believe there are many great things about the Sonic franchise. Most importantly, and finally relating to the title of the damn video, the games in the franchise itself. The gaming community appears to choose to remember all the times Sonic's fallen on his face rather than all the times there was actually a good or even a halfway decent game in front of him. It's a shame, but such is life. Hello everyone, I'm PiplupFan77, and today I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite games in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Now with that kind of intro, you might expect these to be the definitive best games of all Sonic ever in the universe, but the truth is these are my personal picks of my favorite games, with one exception when we get to the end, but we'll get there when we do. This means that, obviously, it's only going to include games that I've played myself. Now some games out there may change my mind in the future, like I have a pretty good idea, I'll at least like Sonic Colors to a certain extent, and God knows if I played Tails Sky Patrol it'd be fucking number one! But as of right here, right now, these are my top ten. Some of these might even be looked at as bad games, I don't know, make your own list, goddammit, this is mine. Alright, number ten, let's go! Sonic Battle's an interesting little gem in Sonic's history, especially when you realize it's not the first fighting game that he's had. No, that title goes to Sonic the Fighters, an arcade game from back in the day that was just recently released on home consoles. But that game's whatever, and we're not talking about that one. This was released between Sonic Advance 2 and 3, and it actually manages to be a pretty decent little fighting game on the GBA. I mean, look at the thing, there's only two buttons, you can jump, and punch, and do things with these sometimes. The main gameplay is set up on a 2D isometric playing field, which works pretty well, although I'd recommend playing it with a control stick on an emulator, because using just the D-pad sort of sucks a little. Each character has their own moves, as they should, some of the coolest coming from Sonic and Shadow. And you can do a bit of customization both when you start a match or lose a life, which is a pretty cool feature. The story isn't anything too crazy. Eggman has this robot that doesn't serve a purpose to him anymore, so he throws it away, and Sonic finds it, and him and his friends become super best friends with the thing. Sound-wise, it actually has some voice acting for the characters, while it is a little bit crushed, and the soundtrack itself is certainly interesting. A few good pieces here and there, but overall it's not anything too special. The game is fun, plain and simple, but it's this low on the list simply because it becomes a little repetitive especially when you're playing the story and all the episodes of the story. But it's cool to see how the different characters and how they all play. And hey, if you're hanging on to the past in a desperate attempt to escape the crushing depression of reality, you might have an old Link cable lying around with some Game Boys, so you can play this with your friends. Hey, this game should totally be on the 3DS eShop, right, Nintendo? <laughs> I know you'd see it my way, please don't flag my video, I don't make Mario videos. I feel like a good amount of people probably haven't played this, since it might get overlooked with lists like this, but if you haven't, I'd recommend it. You'll probably at least have a little fun with it.
After a few teases of moving into 3D on the Sega Saturn, we finally saw Sonic's first true 3D platformer arrive in 1998 for Japan and the more remembered 9999 in America, serving as one of the launch titles for Sega's last ditch effort at a console, the Dreamcast. Supposedly, it was the really revolutionary console for its time with the addition of internet capability, a shitload of peripherals, and a sea of good games out there, such as Shenmue or a really great port of the arcade fighting game Marvel vs. Capcom 2. With all of this, of course it meant Sega's mascot would be along for the ride. Now that things like voice acting and animated cutscenes were a feasible thing, they took a little more time to develop the game's story than they would have in the past. Yes, you're stopping Robotnik as usual, but there's also intertwining stories with different characters. A god of destruction named Chaos, and an ancient civilization of Echidna people that's linked to said Chaos Monster. Which apparently, uh, used to be one of these? Not only were you able to play as Sonic, but also the familiar faces of Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, with the addition of newcomers Big the Cat and E-102 Gamma. All of these offered mostly unique playing styles, with Tails and Sonic being fairly similar, and different stories or parts to the same story all to themselves. Many fans of this game, or Sonic in general, are probably wondering why I put this so low on the list and it isn't something like number 2 or 1. And to be honest, it's simply because it hasn't aged all that well. It feels a bit cluttered, one second you'll be running like normal when suddenly you're in a go-kart for half the level, or you're playing a plane minigame trying to get on the egg carrier, or you're fishing. While some of these, like the awesome snowboarding section, are kinda fun, it makes the entire thing feel messy. The gameplay and control itself was a great jumping off point for the 3D Sonic, but future titles handled it much better. And that's okay! The first of its kind doesn't need to be completely flawless, and Sonic Adventure definitely isn't. However, it has many great things to offer, including an incredible soundtrack to accompany everything. Like, seriously, the soundtrack is fire! I even placed it all the way at number 3 of my countdown on Sonic soundtracks. But as a whole, I won't let nostalgia blind me on this one, even though I believe this was my first Sonic game ever. It was either this or Adventure 2. I think this is a good spot for it on the list. When Sonic was moving into 3D and already had two solid releases, the previously mentioned Adventure and Adventure 2, that one doesn't count, there were some pretty big changes to Sonic as a whole. New look, new gameplay, and an overall new feel to the franchise. But that doesn't mean that the 2D platforming had to end. In fact, it was quite the contrary. A year after Sonic Adventure 2 hit the shelves, we got Sonic Advance for, you guessed it, the SEGA Game Gear! It was one of the first Sonic games to be an exclusive to a Nintendo platformer after so many years of Sega making their own consoles. This game is a total callback to the original Sega Genesis trilogy in Knuckles, clearly being inspired by elements from all three of them, and taking the level tropes from those and making their own, like the classic Green Hill level, or a casino, an ice level, a factory stage, and more. Also, fuck this level? Control is pretty much spot on right here, as it is in the whole Advanced Trilogy. It's extremely similar to the Genesis Trilogy in Knuckles, but with a bit of a more modern feel, with added grinding and a whole four characters to play as, each with their own specialties. Sonic is of course the template and main style of playing, controlling just how he always has, equipped with Sonic 3's Insta Shield and, um, this? Tails, as expected, can fly and attack enemies with these tail attacks. Rad Red over here is equipped with his usual arsenal of gliding, climbing walls, as well as a three-punch combo, useful for killing enemies and getting item boxes. And the first ever 2D playable Amy allows you to perform hammer attacks, along with being able to jump the highest out of all four characters. Only downside is you don't curl into a ball, so you're completely defenseless to enemies. Sonic Advance is a really solid handheld platformer. I just really wish there was some easier way to play it nowadays. Unless you've got an original Game Boy Advance or one of the first Nintendo DS's with the GBA port, you're likely gonna have to emulate this boy. Still worth checking out in every sense.
Sonic's adventures on handheld systems have rarely been anything but good. Even the Game Gear titles had things to offer and were interesting on their own. Oh, and on the Game Boy Advance you could watch Sonic X! You guys remember Game Boy Advance video? I had this one with Ed, Ed and Eddie on it. Shit was cash, man! Once the GBA had started wrapping up its lifespan, we got the very first, and in my opinion, best Sonic outing on the Nintendo DS, Sonic Rush. It's sort of like a spiritual successor to Sonic Advance, only with some new physics, running, and platforming that spanned both screens of the system on a brand new 2.5D look to the graphics. Most people would think of Sonic Unleashed when they think of the game that started the Boost gameplay, but lo and behold, Sonic Rush was the first to introduce that concept an entire year before Sonic 06 even came out. Rush serves as the debut appearance of Blaze the Cat, a fire princess from another dimension, and in my opinion, best girl of the Sonic franchise. She gets brought into the game because she's trying to find the Soul Emeralds, and it's revealed that Eggman is working with a recolor of himself to do... Uh, evil things or something. Blaze plays almost exactly like Sonic, but when she jumps or boosts, there's like a fire vortex around here. I bet it gets hot in there, right Blaze? I'll just let myself out. There's a boost meter that goes down whenever you, well, boost, but you can get it filled up by destroying enemies or performing tricks when you fly off ramps and jumps. All the levels are pretty fun, and there are a few bosses in particular that I really like. And as far as the soundtrack goes, I freaking love the game's music. It has a very unique sound to it when compared to other OSTs from different games. The good thing about this is you can still play it on a Nintendo 3DS, so if you like it, why not take it on those long car rides to Grandma's house? Congratulations to Sumo Digital on making my favorite racing game of all time. Now that claim isn't really too amazing, since I don't really play a whole lot of racing games, but I sure as hell love it way more than Mario Kart. And I can tell you right now it isn't just because Sonic's mug is slapped on the box. Racing Transform took everything the original All-Stars Racing had to offer and transformed it! I'll just let myself out. Through each race, you'll change from a car to a boat to a plane and back again in any combination, whatever amount of times. And every time, it's quick and seamless. When you transform or go off a jump, you'll be able to perform tricks with the right analog stick to get a good amount of boost. And believe me, once you get this down, you'll be using it all the time. The handling in the first All-Stars was great, and it's been perfected here. Everything about it feels tight and 100% the way it should be. The track selection has a few returning tracks from the previous game, but almost all of them are completely new, fresh, and really well crafted. The track variety is really cool, featuring a lot of stages from Sega games and stuff. And it's really cool how the tracks will sometimes change themselves into the race, like one or two laps into it, uh, it'll be transformed into having more water or flying. And there are even some routes where you can choose to do one or the other, like you can take this route to continue being a car, or take this one and be a boat. Character-wise, it's got a good handful of Sonic reps, while having some other Sega characters, such as Knights, Super Monkey Ball, Samade Amigo, Skies of Arcadia, etc. We even have Les Smash Man joining the roster, and I find that pretty cool. Also, we have Danica Patrick for all your real-life person needs. Out of everyone, personally, I usually main Knuckles, or sometimes, but less often, Metal Sonic. Once you get tired of racing, you can try out all the mini-games this has to offer, which are a completely different level of fun. Play Capture the Chow with a friend or two, and things will get heated really fast. Capture the Chow is amazing, and it could end your friendship too, so if you got a, so if you got a friend that you don't like too much, just, just play Capture the Chow with him, and you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be seen around campus, and you won't, you won't want to talk to him anymore. Transformed is an excellent spin-off title that provides hours upon hours of entertainment between online racing, the main campaign, unlocking more characters, and a classic couch multiplayer with your buddies. How can a game where you can drive as a Dreamcast controller as a boat be anything but perfect?
Sonic Advance 2 did what most sequels should and took everything about the first game and made it better. Most notably, they made the game much, much faster, allowing the player to break into one of these break the sound barrier runs, and you can even outrun the camera sometimes. That can be dangerous, but also cool as hell. And hey, cameraman, just keep up, are you following this? You can also perform tricks to help you keep moving at all times. If you press R along with a direction after going off a ramp or rail, you'll zoom up, forward, or back to keep your momentum up. And if you jump and then press forward twice, at least as Sonic, you'll swish through the air getting yourself a faster start than just running from a dead stop. This trick was in the original Sonic Advance, but it shoots you much farther and is much more useful here in the sequel. Also, I think people forget Sonic had a version of the homing attack in this game? If you jump and press A again, only while you're near an enemy, you'll perform a homing attack much akin to the Adventure series. Speaking of which, he's even got a watered-down bounce attack, so overall they really upgraded Sonic probably the most. The character roster kept the original four, but added newcomer Cream the Rabbit into the mix, who can fly just like Tails, but she's also got her companion She's the Chow, aka Press B to win the game. Unlike Advance, you aren't able to play as all the characters from the get-go, and you have to unlock them by saving them from various boss battles, which are now much more fun due to the fact that you're always running in them. Level-wise, they repeat some of the same level tropes from Advance, but throw a few new ones into the mix, namely Music Plant, which I think has got to be one of the most creative Sonic levels of all time. The sprites are not only much more vibrant and colorful than before, but they're also more animated and it gives everything more personality. This one's the last handheld on the list, so I can say that Sonic Advance 2 is my favorite handheld Sonic game of all time. Here's an entry that a lot of people, especially fans of the classic Sonic games, would probably put at number one. And for good reason, it's often given the title of the best Sonic platformer out there, or even just one of the best 2D platformers in all of gaming. When Sega was developing a sequel to Sonic 2, they were wanting to put so much shit into the game that it literally had to be split into two separate games. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. Also, apparently Elves made it? Now even though the two are technically different releases, they're really just two halves of how one big game is supposed to be played. As soon as the Sonic 3 levels end, it transitions immediately into Sonic and & Knuckles. And from day one, the latter was marketed to be hooked up to Sonic 3 with the new LOCK-ON TECHNOLOGY! Oh, oh my God! Also, you could do it with Sonic 2. The game had a save feature, a whopping total of 14 zones, all of which were much larger than Sonic levels before it, three new elemental shield power-ups that helped you with environmental hazards like fire and water, while also giving you some extras like a double jump or a bounce, the ability to play as Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles, and not only did you get a super form if you got all seven emeralds, if you got all seven super emeralds, you could unlock Hyper Sonic, Super Tails, and Hyper Knuckles. The game's absolutely massive, with many more alternate routes in its levels to explore than Sonic 1 or 2 had by a long shot. A whole plethora of new enemies including a mini-boss after the first acts of each zone, bonus stages, special stages, and two sets of emeralds to collect. Shit man, this game is filled to the brim. And in some ways, that can be a little intimidating. Having that much content there, it can sometimes make you worry about the alternate routes you didn't take, or not being able to find the giant rings to get into the special stages, or stuff like that. While both Sonic 1 and 2 could be easily finished in one session, it's likely you'll have to break this game up into at least a few, even though if you really wanted to, you probably could finish it in one sitting. The OST is a complete classic in terms of the franchise, holding many fan favorites such as Ice Cap and Lava Reef and the Big Arm theme. While both of the previous game's soundtracks were composed by Masato Nakamura, 
There was an entire team of people on this one, including film and video game composer Howard Drossen and the now widely known Jun Sonoy of Crush 40. Sonic 3 & Knuckles is an absolute classic that every Sonic fan, or even just fans of platformers, should check out at least once, even if it's just to say that you did. Yeah, I like Sonic 2 more than Sonic 3 and Knuckles, so shoot me! The very first Sonic game did everything Sega needed it to back then. It gave them an iconic mascot, a rival to Mario, and most importantly, a system seller. By being included with the console itself, Sonic 1 helped Sega sell more Genesis units to gamers and families alike, so much so that they were legitimate competition to the Super Nintendo. So with all that success, naturally a sequel was planned. And in 1992, we got Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It plays similarly to the first title, but speeds the gameplay up a lot. What with the good old blast processing and all. It added a really good amount of stuff, too. Like the now classic spin dash, allowing you to get an instant boost of speed right away instead of having to work up the momentum. We even got a new character thrown into the mix, yeah! Kilometers per second, better known as Tails. This little guy will help you out sometimes, but most of the time he'll end up screwing you up. Oh god have mercy on your soul if he gets ahead of you in the special stages. Luckily if you've got a bored friend or sibling, toss them the second controller and they can control Tails on their own. Speaking of that, there's a fucking two player mode in this game, but no one cares about that. Visually it's much more colorful than the first Sonic and uses the Genesis color palette strongly to its advantage. The list of zones is incredibly varied and unique, my personal favorite being Chemical Plant Zone. And what actually kind of surprises me is how many people love Hilltop Zone the most. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a good level, I just would never expect this to be, like, a big fan favorite. If you're looking to play this, it's available on a wide variety of consoles through various ports, and I think it was mentioned to be getting a 3DS release just like Sonic 1 did. If so, I'm definitely going to be getting that. Also, one of the Japanese commercials for this has my favorite slogan of all time. Sonic the Hedgehog 2! Welcome to Sonic Land! What does that mean? Oh yeah, you bet that sweet ass of yours this game had to be on the list. Sonic Generations was made to celebrate 20 whole years of the Sonic franchise, making the entire product come out as a gift-wrapped box of fan service made specifically for the fans. I remember the very day the first trailer for this dropped. The Sonic Facebook page posted the night before that they were going to be posting a trailer in the morning, and when I woke up and saw this, I got fucking goosebumps. I couldn't believe what I was looking at here. What? Classic and modern Sonic together? Oh my god! As we all know, there's only one thing cooler than Sonic. Two Sonics. Damn straight. Generations took some of the most popular and memorable stages from Sonic's history and completely remade them from the ground up, giving you two versions to play per level, classic and modern. This is the closest Sonic Team has gotten to recreating the classic physics, and it works very well. Classic Sonic is fun, but I think I had a lot more fun with modern Sonic levels. Speaking of modern Sonic, he controls nearly perfectly here. Handling, speed, button layout, it's all there. The added missions for each stage provide a good amount of replayability, though there are admittedly a pretty good amount that I'll never touch again after having completed them for the first time. 
Missions can range from being on a board the entire level, something with the elemental shields, being Vector's bitch, and even stopping the egg pawn from wanting to fuck Rouge, what? Look guys, I know she's hot, but... Oh... Oh, Sonic, you might have to stop me in a second, I don't know! Need I even mention the legendary soundtrack accompanying this? They brought in a bunch of the composers and musicians from Sonic's past and let them all have a field day with the songs. A complete album of great remixes that you need to hear. The game also has a 3DS counterpart with completely different levels bar Green Hill Zone. That one isn't anything too incredible, but I'd recommend checking it out for the extra content it has to offer. Iconic levels, boss battles, characters, great gameplay, and fan service topping the entire thing off makes this one of Sonic's best outings yet. Hey Sonic team, can we maybe get SA3 for the 25th anniversary? Not this one, please? Before hitting number one, I'm going to give you a short list of honorable mentions of some Sonic games that I think you should still check out, and I consider at the very least, alright. Alright, so... number one. If any of you have watched my previous videos and heard me talk about this, you guys know it's Sonic Adventure 2. I've made that very clear through many things including tweets and descriptions on other countdowns. I've made it so obvious that it's my number one that I'm actually gonna cheat a bit by not having it here on the list, just because it's probably what a lot of you expected. And to anyone new watching this, well, First of all, hello! But yes, Sonic Adventure 2 is my favorite Sonic game of all time. However, I'm actually planning a whole separate top 10 countdown just on the top reasons why I love the game so much and why it's my favorite. So I thought I'd make that its own thing rather than making the number one here so obvious. So, even though this is the number one position, my second favorite Sonic game of all time is... Oh ho ho ho! Yep, Sonic Unleashed! To the people who have heard me talk about this game before, you might have expected it to be here. But whether you have or haven't, both groups of people would probably say it's a bit bold to put Unleashed at the top of this list, even if it's technically my second favorite. Why is it number one? Well, it's not that I like it, it's that I love it! Did you like that little sitcom fake out I did there? This game came out exactly when it needed to. The last main game in the Sonic series was, you guessed it, Sonic 06. We all know about that abomination. Horrible gameplay, wonky physics, loaded with glitches and questionable decisions. Furthermore, it had a rushed production to get the game out for the holiday season. At least, for the Xbox 360 version. We actually managed to get a good amount of side games after Sonic 06, but finally, after a whole two years, we got the next main series Sonic game, Sonic Unleashed. It would seem that Sonic Team wanted to try to do almost everything differently when it came to the characters and the story here, since there are only a few characters we recognize off the bat, and a good few of newcomers added in. This kept the main cast relatively small, straying away from how Sonic 06 could be considered cluttered with how many characters and story arcs there were. 
It kicks off with Sonic seemingly have already gotten to what kind of looks like the last level to a different game. He even goes Super Sonic while he's stopping Eggman's plans, but then it looks like this all might have been a ploy by Eggman to lure Sonic up into space in the first place. He uses the power of the Chaos Emeralds Sonic brought with him to shoot a beam down to Earth, breaking it into pieces, reviving an ancient creature named Dark Gaia, and turning Sonic into what was called a Werehog. With that, Eggman sends Sonic down to Earth where he then meets the main new character of the game, Chip, who's actually a great character. In fact, he's one of the best new characters we've seen in Sonic games recently. Fuck the Deadly Six. Fuck this bitch. Chip is the real MVP. Sonic's mission is to then find the Seven Shrines to essentially revive the Chaos Emeralds as well as to restore the pieces of the planet back to normal, meeting up with Tails, Amy, and newcomer Professor Pickle along the way, while clashing with Eggman a few times throughout the progression of the story. For the voice cast, this was everyone but Mike Pollock's last hurrah in terms of the main series. I can safely say that this is one of, if not the best, performance Griffith gave as Sonic in his time doing so, as it really shows he got better with time compared to when he first started with Sonic X. And I think people give him a little too much shit. Sure, he's no Ryan Drummond, but in my opinion, he is the second best Sonic we ever got. Unleashed rebuilt the way Sonic moved, controlled, and played from the ground up. And while it didn't really try to emulate any existing style, sort of like what Sonic 06 did to Sonic Adventure, it does share a few similarities with Sonic Rush in the regard of the boost mechanic, although it's much different here as it's being used in a mostly 3D environment. If anything, the PS2 and Wii versions are more similar to Sonic Rush than anything, but those versions of the game aren't what I'll be talking about here. They're a good play for what they're worth, but they hold nothing close to a candle to, as I call it, the real version of the game, which is on the PS3 and Xbox 360. The gameplay has much more to do with speed than ever before, as this is the fastest Sonic has ever moved in a game, and it really feels like it too. Generations feels fast, but there's something about Sonic Unleashed that did that part a little better. Sonic's arsenal gets upgraded as the game progresses, getting moves like the wall jump, stomp attack, or even the air boost. He's also got this new technique of drifting in the game, and it controls way better than the drifting in Sonic Generations. I only have one real problem with the controls for Sonic in the day stages, and it's just that the boost and homing attack are mapped to the same button. Usually there's not too many instances where this becomes a real problem, but when you are just wanting to homing attack and you end up air boosting, it can be a little aggravating. And this was something that was eventually fixed in Sonic Generations. This brings me to the most controversial part of Unleashed, the Werehog gameplay. While the daytime stages completely remodeled Sonic's gameplay as a whole, the other half of the game, or the nighttime stages to be exact, were more focused on a beat-em-up style of gameplay, very much akin to something like God of War. You got a health bar instead of having to rely on only rings, and you had many different combos and attacks to go about beating up the Dark Gaia creatures, as well as Eggman's robots. Let me be very clear right now, I don't hate the Werehog's gameplay. I don't even dislike it. In fact, I think it's actually pretty fun. It splits up the game to have some variety rather than just having the daytime stages. It's actually kind of relaxing to have something slower paced in between everything. And if you like beat-em-up style gameplay, well, you'll probably have a blast here. And let me level with you, Sonic fans who would put Sonic Adventure above Sonic Unleashed. I would gladly, any day of the week, Take a game with one almost perfect style of gameplay, and one style that slows the game down and is boring, over Sonic Adventure, a game with no less than six different play styles, most of which aren't as good as the last, in a game that's usually defended with, but the Sonic games are good. If you were to blindly label all the other modes of play in Adventure, and the Werehog's gameplay as being bad or boring, that automatically makes Sonic Unleashed a 50% good game, while Sonic Adventure takes a measly 16.6%. So fuck right off. Whew, sorry. Unleashed launched with the brand new graphics-based Hedgehog engine, of course named after the popular Sega character Knuckles the Echidna. It brought CGI quality cutscenes and in-game graphics to the table, and for a good representation of this new engine, look no further than the opening cutscene to the game. One of the all-time best animated Sonic the Hedgehog anything ever. Just knowing that both of these were on the same console is like, what? The in-game cutscenes look leagues better than Sonic 06's CG cutscenes, and the CG cutscenes are like fucking 
Pixar! And then the cutscenes in Generations ended up looking subpar. Good job, guys. If I may continue comparing Unleashed to Generations, Unleashed is a much longer, more savory experience. Generations was a game you could beat in a single session, no problem, even with all the extra missions it gave you. That's fine, it wasn't necessarily supposed to be something that you had to keep coming back to and dump many hours into, even though lots of people probably did in replaying it, but Unleashed brought an experience that would take multiple sessions to beat, play through, or even get the full experience out of. And I really fucking love that. If you want a game that will be worth your money, look no further. It's got the story to follow, the main levels, hub worlds to explore, extra missions, metal collecting, and is even one of the few Sonic games with some actual DLC in the form of having extra levels to play. Something Generations really should have fucking took advantage of! Allow me to close out with one of my favorite aspects about Unleashed as a whole. The level of polish and care given to the game itself. It is hands down the best looking Sonic game we've gotten yet. The world environments are all carefully crafted and designed while not being anything like the absolute trash hub worlds from Sonic 06. We got some interesting side characters that had nothing to do with the main story but were still fun to talk to and follow on their own little path. And the soundtrack. Good fucking god the soundtrack. It's practically the score to a film. I've discussed in a few of my past countdowns how I really enjoy the lay motif it has throughout the themes to cutscenes and big events, and I absolutely love the variety it has to accompany the different places of the world you're traveling to. Interestingly, it even took Eggman's theme from 06 to make his now official theme, I suppose. If you're one of those people that took one look at the Werehog and ran, just give it a chance, and go into it with an open mind. It's not like what some fans make it out to be. It's a legitimately great game. There's a reason I'm placing it this high on the list. I'm not a huge stickler on recommending any Sonic game, really. But if no other game on the list, then at least try this one. You can get a used or even a new copy for a relatively low amount. And it's even available worldwide on the PlayStation Network. See what it has to offer. Is it a short title you can get through in a day like the Genesis games? No. And I'd say investing some of your time in it would really be worth your while, especially if you're a fan who has yet to try it out. If you're interested, there's a watered-down version of the game on the PS2 and Wii, but I'd only recommend that if you're really hungering for something else Unleashed related. I'm pretty glad to hear that this game is starting to be included in lists like these for some people, and while it's still pretty underrated in my book, I've seen a lot of people praising it for some of the same reasons I do. I'm just a voice here on the internet next to many others that are telling you what you should do, should play, or should make. But if you cared enough to make it to the end of this video, thank you. I really do appreciate it. That just about does it for my list here. And like I said, Sonic Adventure 2 is still my favorite Sonic game of all time. So be on the lookout for that list coming up shortly after this one. But I did really enjoy the chance to put Unleashed at the top and talk about all the reasons why I like it. If you're interested, I've made a few top 10s in the past, and you can get to them by the annotations on the screen here. Thanks for watching if you did. I had a really great time writing and making this video, so hopefully you enjoyed it at least a little bit. Or if you didn't, that's fine too. Either way, I hope you have a great day, night, morning, or whenever you happen to be watching this. I'll see you all in the next one.